Hello, and welcome to another edition of A Successful Transition from Monogamy to Open. So today we're going to finish up talking about barriers to success. We've spent all this time talking about the various areas where we learn these, these many ingrained beliefs that come at such a young area. Our families, um, our peers growing up, the educational system at large, society, the media, the huge influence of the media, books and films and television and songs and the internet, all of it is such a huge influence on us. Um, as well as the war on both men's and women's sexuality, this whole um, belief of sex and porn addiction, this um, whole belief about uh, the dichotomy for women of good girls or bad girls, and the strong effects that it has on so many women. Um, and I learned a very long time ago why this was so important. So I want to tell you a little story, and then I'm going to tell you a way to start to really focus on this and, and to help you to, to learn how to uh, make some changes in your beliefs that have been running in the background that you may not even have noticed. Um, this was an experience that happened to me between my junior and senior year of high school. So let's face it, about a hundred years ago. Uh, it was a long time ago. And it was, a f I had this opportunity uh, that summer to go and take two college courses and actually live on campus, which was the first time in my life I'd ever lived away from home for an entire month or six weeks or however long it was. And I took two classes and one of them was technically called English composition. But I can tell you in all of those weeks, we did not discuss anything about punctuation or sentence structure or grammar. We spent two hours a day, three days a week, talking about the, th the, the important subjects of the world. We talked about politics, we talked about religion, we talked about um, money and economics, we talked about sex and sexuality and, and gender and, and all of these things that as a 17 year old or as I was just turning 17, these were, uh, it was wonderful to, have, to talk to people about this stuff and actually have people want to know my opinion um, rather than the typical society where you don't talk about these things, uh, or they certainly don't want to know the opinion of a 17 year old. And so it was this wonderful experience. And our assignment for the class was that by the end of the class, we had to write four papers, four one page papers. Uh, and it was our own personal views. One was on um, sex and sexuality, one was on politics, one was on money and economics, and the last one was on religion. And the first three papers I breezed right through. Now, uh, whatever little um, idealistic thoughts I had at that, I would love to see those papers now just because I'm, I'm sure I would cringe um, at the things I thought uh, so long ago. Um, and the last one, I really, the one on religion, I really thought I'd have no problem with. However, I sat down to write this, and you know, this is long before computer, personal computers. So I'm sitting there with my little blue typewriter, and I froze. And I was raised Presbyterian. I was confirmed, baptized, the whole nine yards. Went to Sunday school. Went to church every Sunday. Um, I could recite the pledge thing that you say about what you believe and, and who you are for that religious belief. And I mean, I could easily recite it verbatim at that point in time. So I'm like, I know what I believe. And I sat down to write this paper and nothing came out. And all of a sudden I was thunderstruck with the realization that all of this stuff that I had been taught and basically spoon fed my entire childhood, I didn't believe. And all of a sudden I realized I had to figure out what I did believe. 
And that was a huge deal to me at that point to realize that I had to figure out what I believed, that all this stuff I thought I believed, I didn't. And that can be a very similar reaction when people switch over into open relationships. And you've been doing monogamy your whole life because it's what you were taught to do. And you did all the things that people told you and all the things you heard that you took in and, and you didn't question because they fit the paradigm of monogamy. They fit this only two people and this is what you do. And then, well, at a certain point, um, you know, this should be going somewhere. We should be dating. We should be going steady. We should be exclusive. Oh, we should be moving in together. We should be getting married. All these expectations of how it's supposed to go. Well, a lot of that changes when you start going into open relationships. A lot of those old rules do not necessarily apply. And you have to start looking at all of the ways uh, that these rules are affecting you. So what I usually have people do is I have them take a piece of paper and I have them write a, a line down the middle of the page. And on the left side, I want you to think about all these different things, the family messages, the messages from school, the messages from society, the media. Start thinking about them and start writing them down and noticing all the messages you remember about whether it's about sex, whether it's about relationships, um, everything you can remember. And start noticing in conversations or on television shows or the books you read or the movies you watch or the songs you listen to, notice the subtle little things. Even the news, when you, you, you know, you notice stories about somebody who, some celebrity who got in trouble and now they're going into sex addiction treatment. It's like, is, is that really the real story of what's going on? I mean, I could go on on and on about the whole Tiger Woods thing. I won't today, but it's important to notice that. And then on the right side, start writing down, how, how can you, how can you relook at your beliefs? How can you look at and write down new beliefs that fit with the way you're now behaving and living your life and that work with the new way you're living your life. Do relationships have to only be two people? Can you only love one other person? Um, if you're having, even if you do, or you, you love someone, but you have other more casual sex partners, if you have great sex with them, does that mean you're in love with them? Does that mean that that is better and that somehow negates the relationship you have. There's so many things to think about. Um, so that's what I want you to think about in finishing up this section of the barriers of for success and all the ingrained beliefs is really try to dig deep and think about how all of these ingrained beliefs are functioning back there in the back of your mind. Um, it will it will really help you to be far more successful uh, with this process than if you just ignore them and just let them continue to run. So that's all for this section. Um, I've had some people who've requested some certain topics to have some discussions on. So um, I will work on that in the next thing. So I will see you again later this week. Thank you for joining me. Bye.